So let's talk a little bit about erectile dysfunction. So I'm, I'm mostly the guy who fixes uh, problems with erections. And so this is done with a surgery when all other treatments fail. So if you look at the non-surgical treatment options, uh, the most common ones that are used are, of course, pills. And you really can't watch uh, television commercials without seeing some of these pills with bathtubs in the forest or throwing footballs through tire swings or whatever it is, right? So um, the sad part is that the medications uh, only work in two-thirds of men, and those are men who haven't had prostate surgery, right? So this is the average guy who just starts having problems. One-third of men who try pills, they'll never work at all. And for men who have prostate cancer surgery, have prostatectomy, the pills uh, only work less than half the time. So uh, most men will try these medications. Unfortunately, they end up being a little bit expensive as well. For the vast majority of men who have had surgery, the, the pills won't work anymore, which leaves us with kind of second and third line options. So here is a picture of a vacuum erection device. This is something that men can also use. Used to be covered by insurance, but now no longer is costs three to four hundred dollars and can give a man an erection. The problem is in order to keep the erection you have to use this like rubber binder at the base of the penis and so this is not an awesome long-term solution. You can imagine a single man uh, going on a first date with somebody carrying a briefcase with him the entire time and then when the time is right you know he has got to click click and pull up this device. Not exactly spontaneous, right? We do use this uh, device uh, to help with kind of rehabilitating the penis after surgery and in preparation uh, for other treatments. But as, as far as a long-term solution, probably not the best option. Also, you can do injections. Here's a cartoon of uh, a needle going into the penis. So most men kind of cringe when they see this image. Actually, it doesn't hurt too bad. You ask men, it doesn't bother them too much. Uh, and about 75 to 80 percent of men with erectile dysfunction will get good success with this treatment option. Uh, it's, it's cheaper than pills, and it's uh, relatively straightforward to do. But indeed, at one year after they try it, only about 40% of men will be using this treatment. Uh, many different reasons. One, it's not consistent in how well it works. Two, it's not spontaneous, etc. Or they get tired of trying it. So once those options are uh, considered or tried, then the next option is a surgical one. So uh, the surgery that we do here uh, and is done at most major uh, institutions is called a penile prosthesis surgery. Uh, we've done about 100 in the last year, and they're incredibly successful. Essentially what this is is a three-piece device. So there's three components to this surgery, right? One, there's a pump. And this is hidden in the scrotum. There's nothing outside your body. Uh, nobody knows you have this unless you tell them. Okay, that's the first component. Two are these paired cylinders which actually go on the penis. And then three is a reservoir which holds the fluid when the device is not being utilized. So this illustration shows you pretty well that when the, when the fluid of the device is full here, then the penis would be flaccid. And then when the man pumps this device, it cycles the fluid into the cylinders creating an erection. In essence, this is very similar to what natural erections are supposed to be like. Uh, men, when they, when they get an erection, blood flows into the area and is trapped there effectively. And for whatever reason, uh, when men have problems with erections, either the blood doesn't flow in or it doesn't get trapped and it flows out. So think of your penis like a bike tire. And the uh, person pumping up the bike tire is the blood flow in, and then the integrity of the bike tire keeps the, the air trapped in there to make the bike tire hard. So sometimes after surgery, either the blood flow in is very poor, so you can't pump up the tire at all, or the integrity of that bike tire has many small holes in it. So no matter how much blood you pump in, the tire stays you know, soft and never truly gets hard. So that's something called venous leak. And so how do you fix that? Well, you change the lining or the inner tube of the tire itself. And so that's what this device does, and it works very, very well for erections. <laughs> Uh, if you want to see more about this type of treatment, you can either click on this link here uh, or you can search uh, under Google for Mayo Men's Health Moment Kohler. Kohler is my name, just like the toilet company. Uh, and you'll see a bunch of videos that I've made about um, the penile prosthesis. All right, so no discussion of a surgical solution would be complete without discussing the risks versus benefits. So the benefits of, the, of this device we'll take first. 
It works every time to achieve and maintain an erection. There's no pills, there's no shots. It works every time, 100% guaranteed. It's easy to use, it has normal sensation, and it's covered by insurance. Okay? Those are the benefits. What are the risks? Well, whenever you put an artificial device in, there's always a risk of infection. If the device gets infected, sometimes we have to take it out and start over. Uh, sometimes these devices can break, and then we have to replace them. The risk of infection is about 1% in non-diabetic men. We're, I'm going to knock on this podium here, which I presume is made of very high-quality wood. Uh, I had, event, had not had an infection in about three years in my practice, so it's pretty rare. When it does happen, though, we gotta, we got to get it sorted. Mechanical failure of the device, just like any other medically implanted device, these things can break. These tend to last longer than hips, artificial knees, breast implants, pacemakers, etc. Longest uh, lasting medical device we put into humans. Uh, on average, the device lasts 15 years or so, and they tend to outlive their owners. Uh, penis length concerns, so men will remember their penis as much longer than it actually was. They'll think back to the glory days, and after they get their surgery, they say, Doc, my penis was that this much longer. And when we do good studies, we actually see that when we put the implant in, the length of the penis does not change substantially. And then finally, we can injure stuff in the vicinity, but this is a very, very rare. So when you take all comers and you look at how satisfied are men with the surgery, uh, somewhere in the 90 to 95% of men uh, are very satisfied or satisfied with this uh, surgical solution. Uh, we've had recent evidence that shows that penile uh, prosthesis actually improves depression. And so it's a great uh, solution for men in which the other treatments are e either not wanted or not an option. Of the men who are dissatisfied, which is a logical next question, it's those men who have problems like we talked about. Either they had a problem with the device breaking or they weren't able to, um, you know, they had improper expectations as to what their penis length was going to be with this device. This doesn't change the length of your penis. If I could change the length of penises with, with surgery, I wouldn't have time to talk to you today. I'd be busy operating nonstop, increasing penis size. All right, and then I'd, find, I'd like to leave you with this last statement that only 1% of those men who are good candidates actually undergo this surgical solution. So for whatever reason, 99% of men suffer in silence, and they can restore the relationship, restore their self-esteem, their self-confidence, and just become a normal guy again, do normal guy things if they get this procedure. But only 1% of guys will actually take advantage of the fact that this is available and covered by insurance.